What do you know about air? Except that it's invisible and still moves the earth. What do you know about water? Except that it finds its way. What do you know about fire? Except that it starts with a small spark. And what do we really know about time? Except that it ties everything. Now bring them all together and mix some flour in. What happens now is magic that moves, finds its way, starts with a spark and bakes itself to glory. We are talking about magic that happens in the kitchen. Come experience magic. my yeast into this warm water a little sugar on this is because the sugar helps activate the yeast make a well in the middle of this flour and I add the remaining sugar in the middle here a little bit of salt a little bit of oil and some water Our yeast has started bubbling a wee bit. Add this to water. Okay, now that most of our bread has come together in this bowl, all I have to do is put it on my tabletop and then just give it a nice good knead. Between 7 minutes to 10 minutes is the recommended time to knead your dough for bread. Let's just put this together. This is lovely and soft, as you can see. This is done. Now I'm just going to put this into this bowl. This is a muslin cloth. Shut this and let it prove. It is now 30 minutes and as you can see our bread dough has proved beautifully. On your tabletop, put a little flour. And then of course you have to beat it. <laughs> Basically all the CO2, you get it out of the bread. Roll this out and divide this into 10 to 11 tiny little balls. Just smear a little butter. So now that our dough is put into this baking tin and looks like such a pretty flour, what I'm going to be doing is adding a little Christmas cheer to it. All I need is a little spray of water and then coriander, almond flakes, onion seeds, and now some flax seeds, some sesame, and a little bit of Christmas cheer. This is ready and looks so pretty. I'm going to leave it here, cover it with a muslin cloth, and wait for it to prove again before I put it into the oven. So as you can see, our bread is beautifully proofed and puffy and cute. So just remember, whenever you're baking anything in the oven, the oven always needs to be preheated. So today we're going to be baking our bread at 180 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Just look at how beautiful this is. Take a look at the recap and come right back. 
Tear and share bread. In a clean bowl, add 600 grams of all-purpose flour. In a separate small bowl, add hot water to one and a half teaspoon of dried yeast along with one teaspoon of sugar and let it activate for five to ten minutes. Into the flour, add two teaspoons of sugar, salt to taste, one tablespoon of olive oil and water as required. Now add the activated yeast to the mix and cut it until all the ingredients come together. Take out the dough onto your tabletop and knead it for 7 to 10 minutes. Cover the dough with a wet muslin cloth and let it proof for 30 to 40 minutes or until it doubles in size. Beat the proved dough to take out the carbon dioxide and knead it some more. Roll out the dough and divide it into 10 to 11 small pieces. Smear some butter onto your baking tin and place the dough balls in a circular pattern. Sprinkle some water on the dough and add 2 teaspoons of coriander, almond flakes, onion seeds, flax seeds, sesame seeds and chopped parsley as garnish. Cover it with a muslin cloth and prove it for another 60 minutes. Bake it in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius. Your tear and share bread is ready. My grandmother was very wise. Thi. And very zyada talkative. I mean, I'm obviously not like her, you know. <laughs> Christmas ke ek din pehle, I would follow her around all around the kitchen as she prepared this great stuffed roasted chicken, who she would keep talking to as she marinated it. My Christmas is never complete without my dadi's Christmas stuffed roast chicken. That's exactly what I'm going to make for you today. First need is a nice hot pan. We're going to put a little olive oil, put a little butter. So let this melt on a low. So this here are the walnuts. So into this, I'm going to be adding rosemary. Oh, it's beautiful. Oregano and thyme. Not all recipes call for liver, but I am putting it because my mom at home used to add into the stuffing. So now that our liver is beautifully cooked, as you see, it is very well browned. It's now time for me to add the chicken sausage. But this is something I learned in chef school. The liver is really soft and sometimes it gets a bit mashed. The chicken sausage kind of holds its stead and so it, it's a good bite. Into this, I'm going to add some salt, some pepper, a bit of lal mirchi powder, and some garam masala. A little bit of orange rind. We're going to put a little bit of prunes. Pour in a little maple syrup. Give this a good mix. And now into this, we're going to put nice chopped pears and pineapple. So now that our stuffing is ready, we have one little component. And so now I'm heating this pan with a little olive oil and a little bit of butter. I'm going to be adding fresh breadcrumbs. Give this a little stir and brown this up a bit. It's nice to flavor each component before you put it into the chicken. I'm going to add a little rosemary to this. I'm going to wait for it to cool down a bit. Now we start with the chicken. A good sized chicken that has its skin intact because it is with the protection of the skin that the entire chicken gets cooked to a soft consistency. And so it's a nice, succulent, yummy chicken that you will bite into. The best flavor is, of course, butter. Cut it into small little squares like this so that you can work with it. To this butter, I'm going to be adding a little bit of whatever flavoring I want. The orange rind goes into this. My lemon rind goes into this. I'm going to add a little cinnamon, salt, and pepper. 
a little bit of garam masala and a tiny bit of red mirchi powder. Let's give this a nice stir so that you have all your spices that you have added and your flavors are inside here. Start with the breast. Take your butter. Put this under the skin of your chicken. We now get back to our stuffing. I'm just going to put this together. That's our stuffing. This is the last time you can taste it. And if there's any flavor, anything that you need to add to it, add it now or hold your peace. So here it goes. I've got to stop tasting this because I will eat it up. Into the stomach cavity of the chicken, I'm going to put this entire stuffing. I'm going to put the legs of the chicken into the flesh and in such a way that it holds the stuffing here together. Pull this and just hold this together with the toothpick. Some oil, some salt, a little bit of cinnamon, our Christmas favorite, butter. Just smear it on to the chicken. To add a final amount of spice. Just remember that this needs to be on both sides. So our chicken is now ready to get into the oven. I have preheated the oven, 200 degrees. Merry Christmas, chicken. This chicken is going to take about 45 to 55 minutes to bake. There is an amount of dew that has released from that chicken. Pour this over the chicken so as to moisten the chicken and to get all those flavors infused while it continues cooking. Another 20 minutes more and we'll be done. You know, I love it when food can talk to you. You take a look at our recap, write everything down, and come right back. Stuffed roast chicken. For the stuffing, add one tablespoon of olive oil to hot pan along with one tablespoon of butter, 75 grams of coarsely chopped walnuts, rosemary for flavor, half a teaspoon of oregano and thyme, 150 grams of chopped chicken liver. Stir them all until the liver is nicely browned. Now add 150 grams of chicken sausage and stir it some more. Add one teaspoon salt, pepper, red chilli powder, garam masala and and orange rind to taste. 5 pitted prunes, 2 tablespoon of pure maple syrup. Mix it all well and add 150 grams of chopped pears and pineapples. In another pan, add 1 tablespoon of olive oil to hot pan, 1 teaspoon of butter and 150 grams of fresh breadcrumbs. Stir it until it browns. Add rosemary for taste. Now to prepare your chicken, you'll need 1 whole chicken with the skin intact. In a bowl, add 2 tablespoons of butter, 1 teaspoon of grated orange rind, 1 teaspoon of grated lemon rind, 1 teaspoon of cinnamon powder, 1 teaspoon of salt, pepper, red chilli powder and garam masala to taste and mix it all together. Now insert your butter cubes under the skin of the chicken. Add the crumbs to the rest of the stuffing and mix it all together. Put the stuffing into the chicken and then push the legs into the flesh. Pull the skin over the end and hold it together with a toothpick. Drizzle two tablespoons of oil along with one teaspoon of salt and cinnamon powder. Smear the outside of the chicken with some more butter 1 teaspoon of chilli powder to taste. Roast the chicken in a preheated oven at 200 degrees for 45 to 50 minutes. Feast lunch se zyada mere friends dessert ka intezar karte So I try not to disappoint them. So I make a variety of their favorites. Today I'm going to show you how to make a sweet, yummy gingerbread fairy tale dessert. The first thing you need is a nice clean bowl. Put the butter into this bowl. I'm going to be adding my demerara sugar to it. And then I'm going to whisk it. 
So you whisk this really well till it becomes nice and pink. And now into this, we're going to be adding molasses. Into the flour, we're going to put all our dry ingredients. We're going to start with ginger powder, cinnamon, a little bit of cocoa powder, baking soda or soda mica. So we're just going to very lightly mix this into the flour. Add the flour into the butter, demerara and molasses mixture. We're just going to mix this in. I'm just going to bring this together onto the cling film. Collect it all together into a little mound. We need to put this in our fridge for about half an hour. I can now take it out of the fridge and start with our gingerbread house. So I'm just going to divide this. These are our gingerbread molds and we're going to put it into this mold basically so that we get this texture and then we're going to bake it like a biscuit. cut into the shape of a lovely little house. It's going to get into a preheated oven, 170 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. My kitchen has the aroma of Christmas because of the ginger and the amazing biscuit, which is baked. It's lovely. Okay, I'm going to leave this here to cool. So in the meantime, I'm going to make myself some royal icing. For the royal icing, you need egg white and a few drops of lemon juice. You keep adding a little sugar at a time, very slowly. I'm going to just mix this in. Check the consistency. It is nice. It's just great enough to pipe. So what I have here is melted chocolate that I'm going to be using as glue. How yummy is that? This is the base of our gingerbread house. Put a little chocolate at the base of this house. My little gingerbread house has now come together and now we're going to start decorating it. We had the royal icing that you saw me just make. All I'm going to do now is put it into a piping bag and get ready to pipe. So we're going to try and give our gingerbread house a lot of snow and of course since I don't want to go wrong I want to put my glasses so I'm very precise.
covering all the chocolate which has held this together. Well, the snow looks so pretty and it's covering all the floors. It looks nice, right? Okay, so now let me get my reindeer, Santa and my Christmas tree. This is white chocolate that has been coloured. I'm going to put some more royal icing here that it sticks. And Santa. Our little ginger house is ready. And we're going to have a very Merry Christmas. Ta da! Snowfall. So take a good look at the recap and do come right back. Gingerbread house. Whisk 150 grams of butter, 150 grams of demerara sugar, add 60 ml of molasses. In a separate bowl, take 600 grams of all-purpose flour. Now add a tablespoon each of ginger powder, cinnamon powder, cocoa powder and one teaspoon of baking powder. Lightly mix it into the flour. Add your dry ingredients to the butter demerara mix. Mix it until it comes together and take it out into a cling film sheet. Freeze the dough for 30 minutes. After half an hour, dust some flour onto your tabletop and divide your dough into four equal parts. Roll out the dough and press it into the house mould. Cut off the excess dough and place it on a baking tray. Bake it in a preheated oven at 170 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes. Once baked, leave the cookie to cool on the counter. For the royal icing, take two large egg whites, one teaspoon of lemon juice, 900 grams of powdered sugar, whisk it all together until it reaches a thick consistency. Use melted chocolate as glue to stick your house. Put your royal icing into a piping bag and delicately decorate the house. Use powdered sugar to dust the house. 